This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. For today's video, we are taking a look at my PK Fire deck profile. More recently, you'll have seen an update of the one that I played for a regional. Well, this is my next revision of the deck going into more competitive weekends. Of course, this changes quite frequently, but these are some of the changes that I made. And it's a follow on from that video. So if you haven't seen that already, maybe go back and watch that so you can get an idea to understand why I made some of the changes that I have. Now this has been working really well in testing so far and at local, so I'm pretty happy with how things are going. Although again, there's one or two things that I may change, but I'll discuss that in the video. Now before we go any further, if you're looking to pick up the deck or maybe you're looking to pick up any other singles, check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link down in the description, and if you go ahead and use the code RUFIO15 through that link, you'll get a nice 15% discount on your order. But I digress, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so we start off with the Phantom Knight Monsters. We've got triple Torn Scales. Um, I'm not sure there's anything to add there. It's Torn Scales, you need to play it at three. Uh, we've got triple Silent Boots. Uh, again, you need to play it at three. It's the freest of those. Um, we've got two Ancient Cloak. I think two is perfectly fine. Uh, this is Bricky and you don't really want to open it. You kind of just... It's, it's one of the better ones, but you want to see it when you want to see it and not any other time. So, add two is absolutely fine. We've got a single copy of Ragged Gloves and a single copy of Stained Greaves. Ragged Gloves, you're going to recycle a lot of the time in Levier uh, to allow you to go through more plays. This is normally one of the first ones I dump so I can get rid of my Fog Blade. So, I've got protection for my Rusty and that kind of thing. And Stained Greaves, I was using wrong for the longest time. And now that I've got used to using it properly, it's a very, very strong card. Then for the Phantom Knight Trap cards, we've got triple copies of Fogblade. Uh, I don't think this is up for debate. We all know that this is probably the strongest of them. We've then got a single copy of Shade Brigandine. Again, I think mandatory. Uh, it baffles me that people even consider using the deck without this. It just doesn't make sense to me. And then finally, we've got one Phantom Knight Sword. This is just a pseudo Fog Blade. Now, this I'd probably consider swapping for Wings. Um, and probably will do when that becomes available to me. But until then, I'm using Sword. And Sword is perfectly fine if you don't have access to the Wing instead. Um, again, it just acts like another Fog Blade. And of course, the other effect can occasionally come up. Uh, the advantage of Wing, though, is that the effect lingers. So if it gets took off the field, um, the effect stays there, which can, can come up in like niche scenarios. Next up, we've got Triple Tour Guide from the Underworld. Um, Triple Tour Guide's absolutely... Uh, I, I'd say you kind of have to play it at the moment. It's one of those cards I don't really want to play anymore. In the, It's a weird one in that it comes up, but more often than not, I go for other cards for the normal summon. Because a lot of the time, if this gets hit, your combo ends. Um, unless you've got another extender to allow you to play, then it's not quite as bad. Uh, but I play slightly less extenders than most builds, so that's probably why. Uh, but I think if you're maxing out on them, then this is absolutely fine. Obviously, it's insane when it goes off. It's one card combo. Uh, when the Brave stuff comes out, we won't play it anymore. But until then, we're going to. Uh, we've got a single graph and a single seer. I think one of each is absolutely fine. You definitely don't need Libic or any of the other ones. Uh, this is just great as it is. Now for the Fusion Destiny package. Uh, triple Fusion Destiny. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you need to play it as a three of. And a single Celestial and a single Dasher. I was running Denier in addition to these before. With the logic being it being a Dark Warrior level three, free summon. Uh, you know, it means that if you open one of these, you're not necessarily using resources out of your hand just from the deck. Um, but it really wasn't necessary, and I ended up cutting it, and I haven't missed it. Just these two is fine. Of course, if you don't have access to these two, Mali and Denia is perfect. Onto the Psychic package, we've got one Weed Dealer, one Tracker, and two e Telly. A lot of the time, uh, one of these, or maybe even this as well, will get sided out. Um, just depends on if I'm going second, that's normally some of my options that I go for. But these are great extenders, just, you know, free summons, you know, not much really to add to that. Next up we've got Double Kagamucha Knight for our extenders. Two is absolutely fine, three is just too cloggy. Uh, we've got Suchinoko and Jackalope. Um, yeah, not much to say about these, just three level threes. Potentially draw cards as well, which is nice. 
And our final monster for the deck is Artifact Scythe. Card is absolutely fucking bonkers. Probably shouldn't be in the game anymore. But whilst it's here, we're going to take advantage of it. Then to round off, we've got a bunch of spell cards. We've got Triple Tactical Talents. Or Triple Tactics Talent. Um, yeah, not much to say about this. It's one of those cards I've sort of ebbed and flowed in and out of decks over... Well, pretty much since it came out. I think at the moment it's very strong. There are an awful lot of hand traps around... Um, you know, especially when people are in cross-out, people are in extra hand traps. So you can just really punish your opponent. It helps you to break boards, helps you play through additional hand traps. Um, stuff like people are playing goons, it's like the only win condition. Like this can help deal with that as well. Just, yeah, a lot of good options with this card. Uh, and I quite like it at the moment. Again, it's probably one of the first ones that gets sided out. But I think uh, in your deck and hoping to go first for turn one, uh, this is really a good option. We've got Triple Goblies of Dark Ruler no more. Uh, again, we've opted not to play hand traps in the build. Uh, certainly not in the main, at least. Um, and this just helps us break boards. Like, sure, it's kind of dead if you go first. It's not the best thing in the world. But honestly, like, if you open it and you sell up your board, you can't kill your opponent. Turn three, this is going to just, you know, smash their board to bits. And you're going to outgrind them from there. It's a free win at that point. So... Um, really, really strong. I've, you know, I've had no issues with it. I've never took it out or anything like that so far. I've really liked the idea. This is something that I got from JY's video. Uh, he did his profile where he won the Leicester Regional that we were playing at last weekend. Uh, and this is something that he was doing and I really, really liked it. There's a few more texts that he's done that I've incorporated into my build as well. If you haven't, go check that deck profile out. It's a really, really good one. Gives a really good food for thought. Uh, we've got triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. Um, again, just helps break boards. It helps deal you know with battle scenarios it just does so many different things helps you play around cards it's absolutely bonkers i think this is a mandatory card you need to play it at three and then on to our final two spell cards reinforcement of the army and call by the grave i think you just need to play these this card is so fucking sacky uh but it's just it's bonkers uh and reinforcement of the army you play like a gazillion warriors so yeah you just need to use it now that is it for the main, on to the extra deck. So, uh, Cherubini for the combo, uh, our Phantom Knight stuff, because, yeah, this is absolutely fine as it is. Wouldn't change these numbers. Once or twice I've thought about cutting this down just to make room for other stuff, because the extra deck is kind of tight. But honestly, uh, every time I've ever took this out in any kind of testing, I've missed the second one. Uh, you definitely don't need more than one Rusty. You definitely don't need more than one Cherub. So these four for the combo are absolutely fine. Uh, we've got Dagda, Predapan, Vert, Anaconda, and DPE. So, uh, these two go, like, fucking, yeah, they're just perfect. This as well, this card's dumb. This card's dumb, and so is this. So, not much to say on these. This has probably been the MVP since it's been in my deck. Again, I think I've probably lost a duel when I've summoned it. Every other duel I've won. It helps you out grind other decks. Like, I've outgrind, like, Eldritch, which is one of the best decks for grinding. Uh, so, being able to outgrind it just because of this card alone is absolutely insane. Yeah, just absolutely bonkers card. And if you've got access to it, you need to play it. And then just some additional links here. We've got Link Spider, Nightmare Unicorn, Apollo, Access Code Talker. This comes up a lot less now, but if you've got enough extenders, you can make it. If you're playing a build that has a lot more extenders, of course, this will come up more often. But most of the time, I'm not making it because I'm using my resources to go into Dagda instead and do things that way. Uh, this, of course, is just a win button. This just deals with tricky stuff. It's a nice utility card. This helps deal with things like Nibiru and uh, it can help you get Shade off the board if you need to get an effect monster on the field. That kind of thing. Just has its uses. Good utility. And then finally on to our last of our Exceeds. We've got Levier for combo. Uh, Time Thief, Redoer. Really, really good for grind games. Interrupt an opponent. That kind of thing. Down a Magician gets turned into this. Um, yeah, wouldn't change any of these. Again, this is like the only one that doesn't really do all that much. It is literally just there to turn into this to get you an extra material underneath. But it's kind of... Uh, a means to an end, I suppose. Then onto the side deck. So there is one flex spot in here, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but firstly, we've got Dynarestor Pancratops. Again, we just want to break boards. This card's fucking dumb. Just needs to be... It's like the first card that goes on every side deck list for me. Uh, we've got a single copy of Barbar. This just helps us in time. Honestly, the worst thing in the world is... <laughs> This deck is so very good at grinding that a lot of the time you're going to play against people who have built-in burn. You're playing against things like Prang Kids and stuff like that. Who can just yeet you for a bit of damage and this is just going to help you protect yourself. And of course, if you find yourself in that scenario where your opponent's going to try and cuck you in time, then you've got an opportunity to play back a little bit. Uh, we've got triple copies of Book of Eclipse. Uh, again, this is an idea that I saw in JY's video. Um, fantastic. Really, really liked it so far. Helps play going second into so many different uh, decks in the game at the moment because... 
With the exception of Tri Brigade, which really you should be beaten from my experience. I've not had any issues with that matchup. Things like Sword Soul, things like Flunder, things like Bird, all like lose to this as long as you've got other stuff to go with it. Um, Flunder less so than the others, but like this can be a way to out so many boards. You can also set it um, after you've made your combo or whatever, and it's like a last resort shotgun. They might get to draw some extra cards, but you're probably going to kill them the next turn. I just really like it. I think it's a really good option. It's worked really well so far. So I'd recommend giving it a go if you haven't already. Uh, Harpy's Feather Dust of the back row removal. Same with Twin Twisters. Not much to add there. Again, we're just going to try and go second and break boards when this happens. Lightning Storm for the same reason. Um, just two is absolutely fine. Our Flex Spot here is Triple Infinite Impermanence. Now, this is a card that I really don't want to have to play um, because it conflicts with Shea Brigandine, but at the same time, we need a hand trap that can help us not just insta lose to like Flunder, not just insta lose to birds every time. We could play Droll, but. You know, everyone's playing cross out at the moment and uh, everyone's playing tactical talents. So you just thought I lose to both of those. Whereas cross out, of course, can hit this. But most of the time, nothing else can stop this. You don't get risk getting punished by uh, TTT. Uh, and of course, if you're forced to go first, it's just another trap card to play. Again, it's it's a bit of a flex, but I don't really know what to put in here. So this is just an ear for now. It could be solemns. It could be strikes. It could be anything you want. Uh, but this is just my option that I've gone for. We've then got Imperial Order. This card's broken. Shouldn't be anywhere near the game, but whilst it's here, we've got to play it. And Red Reboot, again, when we're going second, you just auto-win against back row decks if you see this in your hand and you're trying to push for game. But that is all for today's deck profile. Thank you very much for making it this far into the video. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you have, you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe if you haven't already, or definitely you'll give it a consideration. But again, thank you very much for making it this far. Not many people do. I do really appreciate it. Now again, reminder, if you are looking to pick up some singles, check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. Link in the description. Use the code RUFIO15 for a nice 15% discount. And of course, if you're a big fan of the channel and you want to get signed cards, reach out. Let them know when you make your purchase. We can arrange to have that happen. Make sure you read the information down below. And remember, the cards may not be legal if we go ahead and do that for you because, well, the card has now been altered. But it is what it is. Anyway, thank you very much for making it this far. Again, hopefully you have hit subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.